Hello, and welcome back to the Subspace Developer, Developer Sync, uh, Bi-Weekly Sync. Um, it has been uh, two weeks since our last one, and in that time, um, what we talked about, uh, we were preparing for, has happened. We did launch Gemini 3G, um, and it is now our incentivized uh, test network. Uh, biggest upgrade to the network was um, the addition of proof of time, adding the role of timekeeper. Uh, this launch has gone well. I don't, I don't believe we've observed any issues um, from that at this point. So um, I think you know we can count uh, that as a success. Um, for any of you that want more information on proof of time and, and role of timekeeper, uh, we actually discussed this quite a bit in our last DevSync, um, October 30th. There's also resources in the Subnomicon and on the forum. Um, so there's plenty out there if you want to go check it out. Um, other big addition with Gemini 3G is the role of operator uh, becoming more prominent. Um, these are execution nodes running uh, our domains. Uh, unlike farmers, operators must put up some stake in order to participate in the network. Um, and part of our uh, testing um, in this round of 3G is going to be testing that workflow and trying to test it at some amount of scale. Um, so that means trying to get operators uh, more involved. Uh, to that end, I, I know we've talked about this quite a bit, and especially in the community calls and such, um, we are going to be launching stake wars. Uh, Jim, do you mind giving an update on where we are in that process? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Jeremy. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> at the end of last week, we put out a stake wars announcement on the forum. And um, we've, what that, what that says uh, what that announcement is about is, I mean, we've been up front um, from the beginning that state cause is something that has a dependency on features of the network and indeed the state of the network. Um, so we've been listening to the community, hearing your feedback, and we've taken away a number of things that aren't quite ideal um, for our intended original start date, which was this Wednesday, uh, which would have been the 15th. Um, though that feedback mainly centering around this increased complexity around plotting is taking people, it's taking people longer to get their sectors plotted. Um, replotting we know is a hot topic. I think we're going to talk about replotting it in, in a bit more depth shortly. Um, we also didn't quite see the rate of uh, migration from 3F to 3G we'd like to have seen. Um, we'd hope that people would have come over quickly uh, or quicker than we've seen. Um, and that leads into the final point that we, we um, problem we have is that Pulsar is still not ready. So uh, we don't we still don't have a 3G Pulsar, um, which means we know that there are some people who prefer that route um, to run their farm. So they're still on 3F. Our best advice at the moment is consider using the um, the advanced CLI is not that scary. If you can handle um, running Pulsar, there's a very good chance you can run, handle running the advanced CLI. Uh, and we've got great support in Discord, of course. Um, now, what does that all add up to? Um, as I mentioned, we're going to, or as I mentioned in, in the announcement, we're actually going to push the start of Stake Wars Phase 2 back by a week. So phase two, our base building phase is when we invite, that we remove the allow list and we invite operators um, with MinStake, which we still haven't announced, um, to join the network. And really that's the start of stake wars for our operators. Um, we've pushed it back in the hope that we're gonna provide more time for our farmers to move over to 3G, um, provide more time for any 3F Pulsar farmers to consider and maybe move over to using the advanced CLI on 3G, um, provide more time for farmers to earn their stake for stake wars, and uh, finally provide a bit more time for us, the team, um, to refine our support and some of the tooling, some of the support tooling that we're working on for our operators. Um, so hopefully that makes sense to everyone and you understand why we've made that decision. Um, but if you do have any questions, you can come and find us on Discord. Uh, and I'll be happy to uh, answer any follow-ups. Thanks, Jeremy. All right, thank you, Jim. Uh, it's exciting stuff. I know internally a bunch of us are running operators and um, kind of uh, cleaning up that workflow. Um, I don't think Mark's on the call, but we've got uh, Mark has been working diligently on the staking interface to kind of try and make it a better user experience, um, getting uh, um, set up uh, and and such. So. 
um, looking forward to opening that up to everybody. Um, you also uh, kind of touched on um, what we're going to call one of our hot topics, uh, which is a lack of a Pulsar um, release for Gemini 3G. Um, and this has been, uh, I mean, it's frustrating uh, uh, been, uh, for us. Um, there is uh, actually an underlying issue that is happening that, that, that we've been, has been reported, I believe, even in 3F, which was a, a syncing issue um, from the DSN, where sometimes syncing just isn't happening. And this is true not just for Pulsar, but for um, on the mono repo or on the advanced CLI. Uh, what, what is strange in uh, 3G is it's almost 100% of the time showing up in Pulsar, where it's a much smaller uh, frequency showing up um, with the advanced CLI. Uh, but rather than um, fixing Pulsar, our focus of the engineers has been more on trying to fix the underlying uh, issue. So uh, along those lines, Shamil, do you want to give us an update on, on kind of where we're at and what we're doing? Yes, fixing uh, Pulsar is connected to the underlying issue of fixing of the DSN sync. Uh, basically, uh, we introduced a bug some time ago, but it manifested only in uh, Gemini 3G that overflows incoming uh, connection limits on the, on the peers. Uh, we have a fix, uh, however, not all the peers migrated to the new version. And um, it seems that with more peers in, uh, migrating, the situation got improved. At least my just test two minutes ago showed that we indeed have sync sometimes. However, we will. Um, I think that we will improve more and more when uh, more peers uh, migrate to the new versions. Basically, that's it. After that, we will go to um, testing Pulsar again. That's it. All right. So a key a key thing there is, um, you know, we can do so much. Shamil's uh, and and Nazar have been hard at work trying to, um, you know, find the fix and and get it deployed. But this is a decentralized distributed network, so we need everybody uh, in the community to also be upgrading. So um, Jim and uh, your team, you're you're uh, you're going to be responsible for getting the news out and getting as much uh, upgrade as we can. Um, so uh, hopefully here in the next few days, we'll see some improvement uh, in the syncing and you know, maybe potentially be able to get a Pulsar release out as well. So um, Jim, there's another issue uh, that I know has been seeing some um, memeing uh, that is, uh, I, I, you know, people are having making uh, fun with. Um, do, you, do you mind discussing this a little bit, kind of the background from the community standpoint, and then uh, maybe Daria can, uh, you know, touch on some of the more technical aspects of what's actually happening there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's not that frequently that I actually laugh out loud. I might, I might write lol a lot in the chat, but yeah, one of our ambassadors, of course, um, came up with a, a lovely meme uh, <laughs> about how we're stuck in, in this, uh, it feels like a perpetual cycle of replotting. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into why that happens. It is essential, but Dory is going to fill us in on exactly that. But from a community perspective, sure, um, everyone's excited. Everyone's keen to start farm or, or get on with farming their, their stake. Um, so everyone's trying to get as many sectors as possible plotted so that they can make sure that they've got their best chance of uh, signing, um, signing block and vote rewards and earning their TSSC. Um, of course, what's happening is they're reaching the end of plotting the number of sectors and then they're being hit by a replot. Um, so what happens is um, essentially the plotting state, the plotting phase is uh, a bit heavier on resources. Um, and what it does is it can affect your ability to put, find solutions. Um, so you've got the, 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 the basically the, the, replotting and farming are competing with each other. Um, farmers have to make a decision on how many sectors they want to plot, how busy they want their CPU on farming versus plotting. Um, but yeah, so really the, the perception though is that we've got this uh, a network that's constantly replotting and it's hard for farmers to earn their stake. Um, Daria, do you want to fill in some details? Particularly, I think it's going to be interesting to to um, reinforce that this is a a facet of an early network. Yeah, sure. It's well, 
one of those well traders that we had to make between user experience and security and which is security so the thing about replotting is that it's um it is essential to our network as a protocol of archived storage. So all the new data, that's the transactions, the blocks, the interaction with the domains, all of that, the stake wars is going to generate even more of that data. It needs to be written to farmer disks at some point. And the only time, which is also a feature of our uh, protocol, the only time something gets actually written to the cold storage or farmer disk is plotting. So in case replotting didn't exist, where you would just join and you would plot one time, and a lot of people join in the beginning of the network, and they will not plot any new data that's coming, which was a big security concern, which was, well, I mean, we initially knew <laughs> about it. That's why plot, replotting was introduced. So replotting basically serves for farmers to from time to time update some parts of the plots, some sectors, with the new data that's coming on the network. It makes sure that even with a relatively stable set of farmers, new data gets archived at some point and gets replicated along everybody. However, in this particular moment, we have very little data because we're, we're a very fresh, fresh network and we have many, many sectors. We have our amazing community that's pledging a lot of storage. So what happens, uh, basically, every time a new segment is archived, some sectors get a notification that they should be updated. And that happens randomly for every farmer, for every sector. It is really based just on how uh, on when they plot, how big was the history when they plotted their plot. And of course, it was very small because we're a small network and we don't have a lot of transactions. So every time one new segment gets plotted, because we have such huge numbers of sectors, just probabilistically, a lot of them have to replot. So to give you some numbers, a history now is like what it was, 3.5 gigabytes. That's about like 15, 12 to 15 segments. However, our space pledged is like uh, 2.5 petabytes and we are adding like 200,000 sectors a day. This is a very large number. So every new segment that gets archived triggers like a chain reaction of a lot of these sectors having to replot. However, the bigger this history gets, the rarer the replotting becomes. It stretches in time. So you just have to bear with us for this moment. And well, you can go actually to Subnomicon. There's in the Subnomicon, that's how Spaces Network. There is a chapter on plotting, and there is a sector there about replotting. And it has like a chart of how uh, how frequent is replotting on, a, for an example, one terabyte farm. And you can see that it smoothes out as long as, long as the network grows. Um, yeah, you could read more about that there. You could also ask on the forum for more details and I'll be updating them in the Subnomicon as well. But yeah, that's part of the start of the new network. Thanks, it's, it's probably uh, worth. All right, I was gonna say, it's probably worth noting that everybody's going through this as well. So um, on a relative basis, you know, everybody, it's, I don't think it's impacting um, maybe reward earning as much as it might feel like it is during the time that you're going through it, since uh, the competition goes down when others are going through it uh, as well and will benefit those who aren't. I think that's true, at least. Is that, is that a fair statement, Daria? I mean, the probability is same for every sector. So somebody who has more sectors, they are probably more likely to report at some point, but they're also more likely to farm on the rest right. of the sectors than somebody who has less of those and maybe reporting less. But percentage-wise, they're reporting same. I'll also note that I have two farmers running right here, and neither of them are reporting right now. So that while the, um, the meme is funny, it may not be 100% true. Jim, I'm sorry, I cut you off a minute ago. Are you gonna... No, not uh, at all. Um, I, I've I've got two two. One's replotting and one isn't. So I'm I'm and I have seen replotting. So I just wanted to make a couple of callouts. Um, first of all, there's a great forum post if you search for replot on the forum. 
there's a robust discussion that Nazar and, and many of our um, farmers have been involved in. Um, second is the Subnomicon. If you want to read about what it is a core part of the protocol, um, and that you've covered my other points, which were um, everyone's experiencing it. Uh, so everyone's got that same disadvantage, let's say, to farming. Um, but it's an important core part of the, the network. And of course, it will stabilize um, as the history grows. It's not going to, we're not going to have that replot triggered as frequently. We saw, we've seen it all on previous networks. I think there's an added urgency on 3G because of stake wars. Um, so we feel your pain uh, and we're listening. Um, but yeah, any further questions, take a look at the Subnomicon on the forum or come and ask in Discord. Cheers. All right. Well, that was it for the, the hot topics uh, this week. Um, was there any other discussion points anybody wanted to have here before um, we shut down the re recording and say goodbye to our YouTube friends? All right. We will see everyone then in two weeks.